Hello, I'm Gary York, Corruption Behind Bars. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you have not, and please tell others about the channel. You may find a training topic or a discussion about jails and prisons here that uh, may interest you. Today I'd like to talk about corruption. I know there are a lot of articles and videos out on corruption. But do we talk about it enough? Do we really look at it enough? And do we ever just sit down and say, what really is jail and prison corruption? You know, an honest officer has integrity. A corrupt officer has a price. Right from wrong, knowing right from wrong is so easy for most of us. We can go to work every day for 30 years and do the right thing. But why is it that sometimes we have employees and officers that do the wrong thing? They know right from wrong. They know what they're doing when they get into these situations with drug smuggling and bringing in cell phones and having sexual relations with inmates. So what do we need to do about it? Well, our administrators, supervisors, and all of us employed in the prison system must always be aware of employees who seem to be getting up close and personal with inmates. Leaders need to watch out for employees who let inmates know about their personal lives or give inmates breaks on violations or spend way too much time laughing and joking with an inmate or inmates. This is all a sign of the beginning problems that an employee or officer may start to have with inmates or getting too closely involved with inmates. Giving a piece of gum or a cigarette or yes, even an extra tray of food can lead to a more serious threat. Inmate manipulation is always out there and it's after every one of us. It's just how you react to the inmates and how you talk to the inmates. And if they see a weak spot within you, they'll take advantage of you. Talking about your private life in front of inmates just gives them the fuel they need to manipulate you. We had a case at DeSoto Correctional Institution here in Florida where a husband and wife were behind on their payments. They had children. Christmas was upon them. And the husband was talking with other officers about his money problems. What, he wasn't going to have enough money to have Christmas for his children. An inmate who came from a very wealthy family overheard the conversation. He took it all in and he waited until the officer was alone later that evening on the 4 p.m. to midnight shift. He then approached the officer and told him very nicely, I just happened to overhear your situation. I'm very sorry to hear about your situation, but I can help you. All I need is some Royal Crown whiskey and a steak dinner once a week delivered to me. And I have people on the outside that will pay you a check monthly and will get you situated with your home your bills, and your children will have Christmas this year. The officer knew right from wrong. He and his wife had both worked for the system for a number of years, but he accepted the inmate's invite and met the inmate's people on the street, accepted a cashier's check monthly, and in return, the Royal Crown whiskey and the steak dinners began to come into the prison. When the officer and his wife became comfortable, their bills were caught up and Christmas was over, he cut the inmate off, told him no more. Well, you probably know what happened from there. The inmate had nothing to lose. He turned the officer and his wife over to the prison inspector's office and I was assigned the case. He gave me his family members' names in Tampa, Florida. I drove to Tampa, Florida, and they handed me photocopies of all the cashier's checks that were given to the officer. Well, it didn't take much to put the puzzle together. When I interviewed the husband, he denied everything. When I interviewed his wife, she broke down and cried and admitted everything. They both lost their jobs and they both ended up on felony probation. And now they had no medical benefits for their children, no dental benefits for their children, no jobs, no income. Was it worth the risk? It never is. You'll always get caught, believe me. What is jail and prison corruption? Well, the most common types of jail and prison corruption are officers accepting bribes, 
from inmates, sexual favors, smuggling drugs, weapons, and cell phones for inmates, all in return for money, which in the end, you'll get caught, that money will be gone, and you'll have no job, and you'll be going to jail, prison, or felony probation. In other types of jail and prison corruption that we've dealt with, We've had supervisors and administrators cover up violations by officers to protect the agency from harassment from the media, from lawsuits, and embarrassment. All these cover-ups come out in the open in the end. Most of these types of cover-ups are over abuse of inmates, and administration does not want this on their hands, and they're trying to cover up the situation. Now everyone is guilty, including the administrators and the supervisors. Just look at the Los Angeles County Jail. When the FBI had an inmate start gathering information for them, and it was discovered by the administration at the Los Angeles County Jail that the FBI was compiling information on abusive officers at that jail. In the end, the agency tried to, after trying to cover up the allegations, was totally embarrassed. The sheriff faced criminal charges. Ten of his top administrators were fired. It all backfired. It's not worth it. These are the type of things that we don't want to see happen in our jails and prison system. And it all starts with the very little things at the very beginning, with inmate manipulation, and it also starts, in some cases, with over-aggressive and assertive staff. And what do all these people combined do to the honest officers? They place all the honest officers in danger. They place all the inmates who do not want to be involved in these games in danger. And they place the agency at risk of losing hundreds of thousands of dollars in lawsuits. Is it worth it, folks? Things you should always remember if you're working in the prison system or the jail system as a detention deputy or a correctional officer. Misfeasance is using your job or position for, a legitimate, for an illegitimate gain. An example would be receiving money to look the other way or accepting vendor bids as an administrator in return for kickbacks threatening to give discipline to an inmate if he or she does not give you a sexual favor. This is all misfeasance. Malfeasance is premeditated criminal acts or misconduct involving improper use of authority. An example would be inmate abuse, wrongful death, smuggling drugs or weapons into the prison, or having another inmate um, abuse or harm another inmate for you, thinking that your hands are not actually doing the dirty deed, but yet you're orchestrating and conducting the event. Okay, that's all criminal acts. And then there's nonfeasance. This catches a lot of people. Knowingly omitting or avoiding professional moral duties. In other words, it's your duty to report an officer violating a rule or conducting a criminal act. And you look the other way and... You know what's happening and you don't say anything. If the investigation determines and proves and substantiates that you knew this was going on and you did not report it, you could be criminally liable, but the chances are that you'll definitely be administratively disciplined and possibly lose your job for not stopping a fellow officer from hurting an inmate, for example, or tapping the officer out, saying, okay, tap you out, let's go. You need to back off. You, you need to get out of the situation now before we get in trouble. Don't let all these things blister and boil over and cause all these situations. What I talked about today are just a few things to get your mind going about corruption in the jail and prison system. We have many, many, many honest, hard-working correctional officers and correctional employees that need to be safe every day and come home to their families. We have inmates that do not want to get involved in these type of situations, and they want to go home, do their time, and go home to their families. 
Let's all work together as a team to stop corruption in our jails and prison system. And no, I don't think we can totally stop it, ever. But we can definitely slow it down, and we can really weed out some bad apples. So let's do it together. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Corruption Behind Bars, Gary York.